Guilty Crown takes place in a futuristic setting where Japan is being plagued by something called the Apocalypse Virus. The United Nations deploys an organization called the GHQ to contain the virus, and they succeed at the cost of Japan's independence. Years later, a resistance group rises up called Funeral Parlor to fight back against the organization and take back Japan's freedom. And if you thought this story was about this freedom fighter group, you'd be wrong and naive for thinking so. Our main character is Shu Oma, a high school student who gets wrapped up in this conflict after meeting an internet singer called Inori. After coming in contact with her, he is endowed with the power of the king, which Let's be real, it's the power to pull out people's souls and use them as weapons. That sounds fucking awesome. Written on paper anyway. Now he's an invaluable asset to the resistance group and must work together with them in order to help them take down GHQ. This show is trying way too hard to be like Code Geass. As a matter of fact, I think the entire scripting for this show is just a reworking of Code Geass's script. Girlfriend who dies in protagonist arms is other girlfriend who dies in protagonist arms. Blonde rich girl is other blonde rich girl. Crazy science fanatics are the other crazy science fanatics from Code Geass. And glasses girl who doesn't add anything to the plot and is just happy to be here. So yeah, this show's plot is basically Code Geass. Plot. And I didn't notice that until I came to the yeah at the end. But despite all that, let's judge this show on its own merits. Its merits that are blatantly ripping something else off, but its own merits. Let's start with Lelouch. I mean Shu. He's your typical high school protagonist guy person, but he doesn't come off as annoying as the situations tend to make these types of protagonists. He's actually willing to follow along, and he's fully aware that GHQ is kind of a bunch of dickweeds. And once you actually see his backstory, you can actually be a bit humbled by him. All of his friends have that same charm as well. I mean, once you think you've found these kids out, the show just throws something completely out of nowhere. You'd be surprised with how much gravitas you get out of these characters. Even the minor student characters, they get some screen time and you enjoy them as well. I wish I could say the same thing about the members of Funeral Parlor. With the exception of maybe two, three characters, not a single one of them goes through a significant amount of art or character development that really warrants any of your sympathies. I mean, there's an entire episode dedicated to them explaining the shoe that they have to trust their leader, Toto. I mean, Guy. And in no part of that episode, they show that you should trust Guy. In fact, they showed that you should probably be even more suspicious of him. I mean, yeah, it shows that he produces results, but it also shows that these guys are just blindly following his orders. So what am I supposed to take away from this? I mean, the villain characters actually go through more of an arc than these guys do. And well, not to spoil too much, but when Shu becomes the big boss hog in some point in the show, they fucking criticize him for being a bastard and making the hard decisions. You know, the thing that Guy was doing when he was leader. Seriously, fuck these guys. Get your heads out of your ass. Shu has the power to reach inside someone and pull out a void, which is essentially their soul weaponized. And if that wasn't proof enough, that person dies if their void is damaged or destroyed. He's literally playing life and death with people's souls. And what's interesting about the voids is that each one of them manifests into different types of uses. Like some people's voids are actual weapons, some people's voids are just nifty gadgets. And they really do play around with some of these ideas in the animation. However, there are some concepts that they kind of just don't follow up on. Like the voids are a manifestation of people's inner beings. On a few episodes, they kind of touch on this a little bit. But on some episodes, usually featuring Funeral Parlor, they don't really explain or go into greater detail of what that actually means. You know, they opened a can of worms but didn't go fishing. However, they do keep you guessing on whose void you're gonna see next. It really is a nice hook to keep you watching, because the animation on those voids are fucking amazing especially in Nori's Void. Also, the music here, also awesome. If anything that's gonna keep you coming back to watch this show, it's that intro theme song. I mean, the opening to the theme song is just breathtaking that you actually wanna keep listening to that and that'll just fish you in just enough to keep watching more of the show. You crafty dog, Guilty Crown. Hi, Future Drake here again. In past Drake's haste to wrap up the video, he neglected to mention that there is in fact a manga, but it is a complete retelling of the story. 
But if you want to know what cut content didn't make it into the anime, well, you can pick this up and see for yourself. Also, there is an extended universe virtual novel, and if you would like to see what other stuff happens in this world, you can try to play the virtual novel as well. And now seeing that I've hit all the cues for this review, it's time for me to head back to the future. We have a huge titan problem that we have going on that needs solving. All in all, Guilty Crown has a simple plot surrounded by a really nice script, really good animation, and really nice music. I highly recommend you check this out and see what you think of it. And if you have seen it, what did you think of it? What did you like about it and what annoyed you the most? And what kept you coming back for more besides a steady internet connection in this one room in a closet? Like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you check out Guilty Crown. Guilty Crown. Guilty Crown. Guilty Crown. Guilty Crown. Code Geos. Guilty Crown. I see what you're doing there. Stop it.